We are now joined by the head coach of the U.S. Men's National Team, Greg Berhalter. If you'd like to get in a queue to ask a question, you may do so now, and we'll start with opening comments from Greg. Thank you, Michael. Um, another competitive World Cup qualifier match. Fantastic crowd in Columbus, fantastic conditions, field conditions, and weather was optimal for us tonight. The, what I'd say is that, first of all, it, it's great to get a shutout, another shutout in World Cup qualifying, which is, which is really important. I was also really pleased with, with the effort of Anthony Robinson. I thought he did a, a good job, was busy all night. Timmy Way was very active, stretching their back line all night. And I, I really liked the contribution of Jesus Ferreira, who set up a number of plays and also had a couple of opportunities for himself. Looking at some things we could have done better, I think we've, we lacked connection in our pressing. Too, there was too often that there was too much space between our lines and we weren't able to, to make that next play on, on the pass when pressure was broken. And I think that the ambition to play forward and get behind them w w was missing for, for the 90 minutes. We had it in spurts, but overall I think we could have done that much better. The big picture of this game is, is we're, we're still in a very good position in World Cup qualifying. The three points were vital at home and we achieved that. So happy, now it's time to, to regroup and g come up with a plan to attack Canada. Thanks, Greg. We'll begin with questions and start with Jacob Myers from the Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Greg, thanks for doing this. Um, when, when you took off Christian in the 64th minute, was that for performance or was that program? And then I just wanted your perspective on, it seemed like he had difficulty at times keeping possession. Was it much of a factor in the attack at times too? Did you see any reason as to why that was? Thanks. So overall, happy with Christian's effort in the game. Uh, I think the effectiveness could have been more, as you mentioned. And at that, looking at that moment in the game, looking at where we thought the game was headed, we wanted to get him off and get some fresh legs in. We put Brendan in, a guy who we know can, can repeat high-speed runs and really is relentless attacking their back line. So we thought it was a sub that was going to give us some help. Regarding Christian, it's, it's just about him finding his, his top form and really finding ways to get him to, in front of goal because that's where he really shines. When he's in front of the, the penalty box is when he does his best work. Next would be Paul Tenorio from The Athletic. Thanks, Michael. Um, Greg, you mentioned Jesus Ferrer's performance tonight. Had a couple chances in front of goal, wasn't able to convert. You guys have scored goals in qualifying, 13 goals, second most in the group. Um, Ten of those have come outside of the number nine position. Is that something you're okay with by design, that you want the wingers and fullbacks getting involved? Or is there a concern of trying to find ways to, to get some goals out of that number nine position as we move forward in qualifying? Well, I think, as you, as you mentioned, Paul, he had enough chances to score a couple goals. So that's the most important thing. If he didn't have any chances in the game, I would have been concerned. But he did have chances, and I think it's just a matter of, of him being able to finish those off. Regarding his link-up play, I thought it was excellent. A number of times he was setting players up, as we expected him to do. So overall, although we, we might oh, try to judge number nines by their goal production, I still think he had a, a solid performance. Next will be Drake Hills from the Tennessean. Hey, Greg, uh, I had a quick question just about, you, you mentioned a little bit about the combination play, and I wanted to talk about, particularly when, when Pulisic was on, um, the combination between Musa, uh, McKinney, and Waya, and also Guest sometimes a little bit on the right-hand side versus the left. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, uh, from your standpoint, why do you think that was a little more um, dense uh, as compared to uh, on the left when, when Pulisic and, and, and Musa and Robinson were involved? Yeah, that, that's a good observation. And I think it's just, it starts with the positioning. Uh, it, it's important to have a winger high on their line, ready to stretch their back line. It gives us space in our attack. And on the right side, we had that. We had Timmy in position the entire time to get behind them. We had Serginho joining, and we had Weston helping out on that side. On the other side of the field, at times, Christian was too low. That meant, that meant Anthony was even lower, and it was hard to really get any, any forward momentum to, to start producing combinations, especially to stretch them behind. So 
it, it wasn't it wasn't perfect, but I think the goal came from the left side. I also think this, the second half we we changed. We had a, a lot more success on the left side of the field. So it was um, in the end happy with that we were able to get that left side back on track. Next would be Ron Blum from the Associated Press. Thank you, Raymond. Uh, looking at, I think, 11 of the 13 goals have been in the second half and the adjustments you've made at halftime have clearly worked. Would you like to see anything different in the first half looking at the overall arc? Is it being more conservative in the first half before being more aggressive? Or are you happy with everything so far in that? Well, in, in terms of happiness, I, I, I wouldn't say this is this was our best game. We didn't finish our, enough of our chances that we had. I, I mentioned in the in the opening statement that I didn't think our press was connected as it needed to be, and you could see that we were away from each other for a while, the the majority of the group. But regarding the goals coming in the first or second half, you know, we had enough chances in the first half to score goals. So that's what I'm happy with. I, I think we we could have finished up, off some chances. We could have been up one nothing, or two nothing, and we weren't. Um, when you have an expected goals of two point five or something like that, you're doing pretty well in a game. You also have to give El Salvador credit because those guys fought. And I mentioned in the pregame about how they press the ball and how they move forward and get after it, and they they did exactly that. So so give them credit as well. But overall, we created enough in the first half. We just unfortunately didn't get the score. Next will be Doug McIntyre from Fox. Thanks, Michael. Hey, Greg, congrats on the win. Just Thanks. curious, Weston's status, he looked like he was limping at the end there. Uh, and on, on that note, I mean, how much squad rotation should we expect for Canada now that this first game's out of the way? Thank you. We're going to have to assess everyone um, tomorrow and see where they're at and then make decisions on the lineup for Canada. But regarding Weston, he, he seemed fine. Maybe maybe he took a bruise or something, but we don't expect it to be anything major. I have spoken to medical, and, and nothing came up. Next will be Grant Wall. Hey, Greg. I wanted to ask you about Anthony Robinson. Were you expecting this knack for important goal scoring in this tournament from your left back? And what does he do as a left back to put himself in those positions? So, Grant, we call our fullbacks our superpower of our team, and um, we do that because they produce. They give assists and goals. If you look at World Cup qualifying so far, our fullbacks have contributed heavily. Serginho has goals, goal and assists. Anthony Robinson has goals and assists. DeAndre Yedlin has assists. Um, who, el who else has contributed? But our fullbacks are, are great for us, and they're a big part of how we play, especially when we're dropping our midfields lower. They're really important. Regarding Anthony, Anthony, at Fulham, he's been in great form as well. He's been attacking. We asked him to do something very similar, so he's used to that. He's, he got up and down the field. He got some good crosses in, and he was able to arrive in the penalty box to score goals. We put an emphasis on our fullbacks arriving in the penalty box because we know we have that midfield line that's supporting them and can, can clean up anything that comes out in the top of the box. Next will be Sam Stasekel. Thanks, Sam. Um, you mentioned, you know, that, that there was a lack of connection in midfield. Um, any concern about that heading into Canada, especially given how the last game went against them with the struggles and build up against the low block that they played against you guys? I, I was referring to the lack of connection in our pressing. I, I didn't think our midfield line was connected enough to our forward line as we were pressing. So that's something that, that can improve. I think as we get players closer together, in terms of distance-wise, we'll be able to make those passes and maintain those connections offensively. At times in the first half, the distances between our midfielders was too far apart, and, and the team was, was disconnected a little bit. We were building with four players, and six players were high, so we made that adjustment at halftime. Next will be Jonathan Tannenwald. Thank you, Michael, and congratulations on the win. I wanted to ask about Chris Richards, who has played in a few qualifiers for you now and kind of and he shot out as more than just uh, and just one player, obviously. But you know, he, what did you make of him tonight? And, and so far, having a fairly rapid integration into the starting lineup, all things to say. He, he was good tonight. I think that his positioning uh, defensively was very good. His build-up play was good. And I, 
if I had to pick on one thing, it might have been anticipating balls in front of the attacker and being able to get in front of him. He fouled a number a couple times. But overall, you know, I've been, I've been really impressed with Chris and his development. We watched his, we've been watching all his games, but in particular his game last week against Dortmund where you know, he's going up against Holland and it's, it's not an issue for him. He's able to match him with, with his strength and his speed. And we've seen a really sharp learning curve from him in this last couple months. Next would be Ivis Galarsep. Greg, first, uh, Anthony Robinson scores another goal and shows off that celebration. Are you ready to ban the celebration, or will you take it if he keeps scoring in these big spots? And, uh, and as far as the second half, the midfield seemed to really step it up. What, 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 was di- what did you see different from your midfield three of Eunice, Weston, and Tyler? Because it seemed like they took it up a notch in the second half. We adjusted their positioning. I mentioned about the, their, their connection, their spacing in the first half was off. So we adjusted that a little, got them a little bit closer together, got them a little lower that they connect with the center backs. And then regarding Anthony Robinson, you know, if a guy scores like that and chooses to do that, who am I to ban that? That's an amazing physical feat. Me and you couldn't do that, Ivis. So <laughs> congratulations to him for even being able to do that. I think it's really impressive. But in all seriousness, Anthony Robinson was the coach's man of the match tonight just for – his relentless attacking and, and getting that goal that was really important for our team. We invite any members of the media to attempt that on their own. Next will be Michael DeCourcy from the Sporting News. Yes, Greg, I, obviously the goal is the biggest thing when, for Anthony, but I noted several times, uh, especially in the second half, where he intervened in, in important moments. How is he able to be as dangerous as he is at the offensive end and still be as responsible as he is on deep? It's a mindset. He knows that he needs to be relentless on the field. He needs to attack and defend. It's not one, it's not one or the other. It's both, and he understands that. So he, he gets forward, and his fitness is good enough to be able to get back. And as I mentioned, when he's forward, hopefully the midfielders are there to create that net that prevents the opponent from getting out, and he can ease his way back. But he was good on both sides of the ball. In the first half, a couple issues on, that, on, the, on his side with guys getting behind him, but we, he corrected that, and in the second half, he played really well. We'll take a couple more for Greg, and I'll also mention that after Greg, we'll have Anthony Robinson and Tim Weah. Next will be Rachel Krieger. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Greg, for taking my question. Thank you, Michael. Um, Greg, just kind of wanted to get your take on El Salvador. They're a young team, um, a budding team. Hugo Perez, um, a great coach, he said after the game, you know, we didn't win, but there's a lot of growth considering last year, or I'm sorry, a year and a half ago they came in and uh, lost 6 nothing, and tonight they lost um, one nothing. Just wanted to get your take on that. Thanks. He's done a great job with them. You know, they have a, a group that they've been working with. They're young. I think we're still probably younger than them by, by a, a good margin. But they are a young team, and I have a lot of respect for what Hugo's done with that group. You know, former national team player is a guy that we all looked up to, and any soccer player around my age looked up to Hugo Perez, and he's doing a fantastic job with El Salvador. One thing I mentioned before the game is how they were going to compete in this game, and a lot of that has to do with the coach's mentality and the mindset that he creates um, for the players. So... We're pulling for them. We hope they win all, all five of their games. We'd love to see that, and um, he's done a good job. Last question for Greg. We'll go to Ryan Talmich from Goal.com. Hey, Greg. I want to ask about Matt Turner, a guy who's been in the news a little bit lately. and I feel like it's a little easy to forget that he's only been with you guys for about a year now because he's just played in so many big games. And he's also a guy that, you know, based on his path and, and, and everything, probably should have never made it this far. So what is it about him that's allowed him to make it this far? And what have you seen from him in the last year that's allowed him to play in these big games and to have you trust him so wholeheartedly like this? Well, first of all, I think it's just a great story. And, and I hope the public's aware of, of this ascent of, of Matt Turner because it, it's an incredible story. He went to Fairfield College undrafted out of out of college and now he's playing with the national team and he's headed to arsenal it's just an amazing amazing story and it's all down to him 
and his work ethic and his belief in himself and his never give up attitude, it's a, it's a great story. And Matt is, is a great guy, great teammate, and we're lucky to have him. But tonight was, it was an example where he did everything he had to do. He was calm in all situations, wasn't tested much, but was there when we needed him. And um, he, he looked like a, a player that's going to Arsenal for sure. Matt also in his first year, the two, one of the 2021 BioSteel Male Athlete of the Year nominees. Thank you very much, Greg. We'll be right back with Anthony Robinson. <laughs> 